Okay, this week we're going to draw the uh, the reel. Uh, if you got your worksheet, this is what we're going to draw. This is what we're going to mimic. So the way I'm going to start drawing this is I'm going to start drawing circles. I'm going to start from the smallest circle and work my way out. So I'm going to start with this one and then this one to kind of the center here. The two center line circles, this circle that goes around the perimeter here, and then the outer circle. So what I did is I've opened up a standard template that we got that we've been using with the standard title block. I'm going to make sure I'm on layer visible. I'm going to circle. I'm going to check diameter because the center one has a diameter of zero. I'm going to make my center point zero comma zero comma zero. So it's asking for my diameter of eight. I always just type in D enter and then my Radius when I start circle. That's up to you if you want to do that or not. So, yes, so I start my circle, my base point. Now the next circle is a radius, so I just type in R and then hit 25. Now the next two circles I have are on the layer center line, but it's asking for a diameter of 102. Uh, yeah, 102. That's one. And then the other one is 73. So I did them backwards, but I'm sure you guys can figure that out. You seem smart enough. So I want to put these on the correct layer right now. Um, and I'm going to change my LT scale to this. So you see the dash on these circles here. I'm going to change it to 20. A mm, little space down a little far. So let's make it 10. So there you go. Uh, but that's just the preference. You guys can pick your scale. I just want to be able to see this center line here. So the last, the widest circle was a diameter of 102. So the next radius, the next circle we're going to have has a diameter of 128. And then, of course, now we're working with the outer circle. So, and the outer circle is a diameter of 143. So these are all the circles we're going to need to replicate this. So I did this circle, that circle, this circle, this circle, this circle, this circle. So now we're just going to try to get the rest of these lines in here and start trimming and filleting. So, uh, but the first thing we got to do is we're going to draw this object and this object. So I'm going to use a circle here, which... The radius of this circle is 13, because if you count around here, there's 13 or 9 of these. And then this inside one is a radius of 6.5. Now this circle, the center of it, is right here, where this center line and this center line meet. And this one is where this center line and this center line meet. Okay? So, back to the AutoCAD thing. Obviously, I see we got to do our horizontal and vertical center lines. Right, so I'm just going to draw two lines. Um, you can use this center line annotation. I'm just drawing them because uh, I think there's some offsetting and all we'll have to do. So I'm just kind of holding it like that. But I have it here. I'm going to put it on the center line layer. So now we're going to draw those circles. Now we could use an arc to figure this out, right? But let's make it easier. We're going to make two circles. And then we'll use lines with the tangent on them. Okay. So this here has a uh, radius of 13. That can't be right. Sorry. I picked the wrong spot. It's a radius. I picked this. Okay. Of 13. There we go. And then this bottom one on this center line has a radius of uh, 6.5. There you go. And now we're going to use our line command. All right. We're going to use our O snap tangent. Tangent. And then we have tangent. Oops. I use perpendicular. Remember to get the quick little thing. It was uh, shift right click. So that's the easiest way uh, to do a uh, single snap. So tangent, I think I'd hit quadrant, didn't it? Yeah, tangent. So yeah, sorry, line command. So we do shift right click, 
pick tangent so I hit there shift right click tangent right here All right there you go so I know I want to cut everything between this line and this line so I use the trim command right so I pick this line this line and I right click so now I accept my trim patterns so there we go now we have that um, now down here we have one two more of these so what I want to do is I'm going to draw a line and we're going to rotate it 120 degrees and then I want to do the same thing the opposite way so uh, actually I could probably use rotate right so I select that line to rotate hit enter my base point would be the center of this circle right now I'm going to also copy this I'm going to hit copy and then I'm going to go 120 okay so there's that line right there we don't really need it here so I'm just going to trim it okay now we can also rotate this line again but I'm going to use the mirror command so I'm going to hit mirror select this line I'm going to use this as my mirror line because remember whatever you, you this is your mirror line or what it's mirroring off of there you go so I have both those lines now so now this is asking me I want to put one here and here so we're going to go to polar array array okay got this one uh, array so we're going to select this 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 is the objects we want to array okay this is asking us for the base point now so I'm going to go to the center of this circle right now it's showing us that there's six there we don't want six so we're going to go to items down here we're going to go to three there you go we got that okay so now the next thing we need to do is we need to draw these right here okay so we're going to offset these lines use the command offset it's asking us uh, through which is the distance so it's 6.5 and this shows on the drawing oops we can't do that so we're going to use the explode command which if you type in x click on it and right click or hit enter it will be fine these all become individual lines now so we're gonna start this over again it's 6.5 we offset it that way and we're gonna keep we're gonna do that at all these right here offset 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 uh, offset offset right okay so now we have all these edges right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fillet these things so this is telling us the radius of these fillets are 13 okay the inside of these radiuses are also looks like 13 so we're going to go around and fill it all those is 13. so the fillet command we're going to type in the r for radius and type in 13. go here here There you go. See? Just fill it in on the circles. Click the line. Click the outside circle. Circle, then I'm even clicking the line. There you go. Just going around, filling it in. Okay. Here, and then here. Here, and then here. Here, and then here. Here, and then here. So, we got all that. So now we can just go to trim. Trim. We right click, everything's a trim edge. So we'll go around here. Correct. Make sure you get all your little lines here. Make sure it's nice and pretty. There you go. Then we got a trim inside here too, don't we? Trim. Right click, everything's a trim line now. Okay. Think that looks pretty close, correct?
there you go. So, now that we have that, we got the object drawn, now we have to dimension it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to annotate. And we're going to use Angular. First of all, we're going to make sure we're on the correct layer. And then we're going to hit Annotate. Go to Angular. Click here and here. So that gives us 120. Now, we're also going to use a line. This is going to do the dimension here. So if you click this line, you got to go here and you got to go to the perpendicular of it. Okay. Make sure you go to the perpendicular because that's how we'll get the 6.5. Now you can take that and move it down here. Maybe. But yeah, you, so you can move it down here into there. Um, but make sure you hit those lines because if you don't, I'll just do a little example here. So if you hit here and here, you see how it kind of goes off? So you got to get that perpendicular. That's pretty important. Okay, now we got to start getting our diameters and our radiuses. Okay, so we know that uh, this inside one was 8, right? And then this one, the next one was a radius. So we're going to go radius. And then we're going to go to this next one, which is a diameter. We're going to go here. You know there and then the other inside out yeah this one it's down here at 102 and then this one was 128 okay and then this outside one was 143 now the one thing we want to change here is we see all these how many zeros are behind a decimal point if you go to your dim style here under the annotate tab the arrow we're going to hit modify we're going to primary units right here under precision is zero point and there's four zeros. We want to take that to one zero past the decimal point. Zero point zero. Click OK. Close. Look at that. Gets rid of all those zeros for us. So, okay. So the other things we got to get is the uh, radiuses of some of these other circles. I want to do this one down here because that one dimension is a little bit in my way. So there is, if you look on the sheet, it says this is three times. So we double click on it, go 3x space. Now this purple is the actual dimension. So if you delete that, you delete the whole dimension. So just don't hit that. Now here, you'll notice I made a mistake here. That should be capitalized. Right, capitalized. There we go. So we got that. Um, and then we got, uh, what's the other one? So we need this here. Okay, so we'll go to radius again. Um, this tells us six times. Oh, you see, I remember. Do you want to say, see? So you notice I lost the uh, dimension there. So, we got that. The big thing is make sure these are clear. So, clean and crisp, nothing's crossing them. So, that's the biggest thing. Uh, and then the other dimension we need is right down here. We need to get these. And it said nine times. So, um, and you'll see that I have now have the little star there from when I put in the dimension there. So that's uh, pretty much this exercise in a nutshell. So uh, this is how we do it. Um, so thank you very much, and this is the real.